Hackers, welcome back. Today we're looking at generating Java code with Lombok. Lombok is a Java library that spices up our Java code. And really what it's doing is it's generating some of the boilerplate code that we use in every single Java program. And with Project Lombok, we use annotations to generate getters, setters, constructors, the equals method, and other things that are commonly used in Java. Before we get started, we do have to create a Maven project. And so Lombok is not a part of Java, it's an external library. So we need to use a package manager in order to import it into our Java program. Gradle is one, Maven is the one I use. And so we're gonna use Maven. I'm in my desktop here. And what I'm gonna do is run this Maven command and it's going to generate a project using the quick start artifact ID or that template. So Maven archetype quick start, this is like the main template. We are gonna call ours tutorial, that's our group name or group ID. And then our project name or our artifact ID is the Lombok tutorial. We're gonna make this version 1.0.snapshots, we'll just hit enter and build success. If we run ls, there's our Lombok tutorial. So that's the project ID. And if we cd into Lombok tutorial, we can see our pom file, which is where our dependencies are gonna live as well as our SRC folder or our source code folder, which will have the source code for the Java application we'll write. So let's import it into our IDE IntelliJ. So I'm gonna click open or import. I'm gonna navigate to my tutorial or my project, click open, and it's gonna set up our Maven project for us. So with the Maven template, we did get some sample code, including this app class, which just prints out hello world, as well as a test class that ensures the application comes up. So meaning the application runs. It doesn't really test a whole lot of stuff. Here is where we would add tests if we wanted to thoroughly test this application. But we don't wanna do that. We're gonna create some classes that generate code using Lombok. To use Lombok, we are going to add Lombok as a dependency. So we'll add another dependency here in addition to JUnit, which is a testing framework. The group ID is org.project Lombok. The artifact ID is Lombok version. That looks correct. And in addition to this, we are also going to enable the plugin for Lombok. And so this will basically make it so we don't get compiler errors with IntelliJ when we add the Lombok annotations. And so here I already have it installed. If you don't have it installed, install it. You'll have to restart your IDE in order for it to take effect. But once you have those two things, and so adding it to your POM file and the plugin, you're ready to use Lombok. And you can use the Maven window over here with the reload all Maven projects for the POM file changes to take effect. If you don't have this on the right, you can go to view tool windows and there is the Maven window and it will pull it right up. So let's write some Lombok code. And so you're still writing in Java, but you're gonna leverage the Lombok external library to generate some of the boilerplate code. So I'm gonna create a class called player in my tutorial folder here. And we're gonna add two properties or two attributes, two fields. All of these are kind of the same thing, but we're gonna call it private. It's gonna be an int. We're gonna have an age for the player as well as a username that will be a string. And so usually when you're creating this model type class, and so it's representing an object or it's representing a type in your program, you have to create a constructor and that would construct the object and you would put player and you'd go int age, string username. And whenever someone wanted to create a new player, you would make sure you set up the object correctly by setting the age that's up here equal to whatever the constructor gave as an input. So that would be here. And then you would do this. But this is so much boilerplate code and it's kind of annoying. And so a lot of times I'll just do all args constructor. And so when I write this, it will generate this piece of code behind the scenes for me. So I won't have to include that constructor and I can still construct players. So if we go into our app 
class here, we can create a player using that generated constructor. So we'll call this player, player one. We'll say new player, say 25. The username will be Blondie Bytes, of course. And we're able to use this constructor right in our main class. We didn't, we had to write one line of code or one annotation instead of that full constructor. So let's print out the player and see what happens. So we're gonna do system.out.println player one. We can run this file in IntelliJ by left clicking and then running that app.main function. This will execute what's in here. This kills me, these brackets. They're on the wrong line and we have this extra space. So this target byte code should be 15, not 1.5. And perhaps we need to add some properties as this post says. So that means going into our pom file, we'll add these properties and then we'll also add this dependency. This will allow us to compile with Maven, hopefully. All right, we're running and our player is a little hard to read. We want to see some of these details about the player. Usually this would mean we need to add a toString function to our player. So we would do toString and well, IntelliJ generates it for you, but you'd still have to write out all of this code. Lombok does this behind the scenes. So we can add toString here, delete this, and we'll get that same output that the other two string function would do in our console. So instead of the tutorial.player, now we're gonna get the age, the username, all of that beefy information. And so the age, the user, all I had to do was add the one annotation. Now one common thing you often do with model objects is get access to attributes. And so you might say like if player one dot get age is less than 18, then system dot app dot print ln, you are too young. So this is a common idea of let's grab an attribute and use it for some business logic or some logic in our code. Now this getter, you would have to create public int get age all of this stuff, return age. And then to set the age, if we're gonna allow the user to reset their age, we'd have to do void set age. And we'd have to do this for every single attribute in our code. So the user would put in an age and we would set whatever our age is to that new age. But this is like eight lines of code I don't really wanna write. It would be great if we had an annotation that would generate this code for us. And we do, we can use at getter and it will generate getters for our age and username attributes. If we wanted to create setters, meaning I wanna have a set age and a set username method, then all we'd have to do is write at setter and it would create those as well. So if we delete these, save this, go back to our app, now there's no more compiler error because the get age method does exist. So if we go player one dot, we get so much more functionality for free when we use Lombok. We get get age, get username, set age, set username. So say I wanted to change it to Blondie Bytes, but with a one instead of an L. That's something we can do. We can do it because we added this setter notation. Now let's say I wanna have a getter for the age and a getter for the username, but I only want to be able to reset the username after creation. So age, once it's set initially using that all args constructor, I never want to reset it again. This is something we can do. So what we would do is we would take those away and we would have something like this. Now since age and username are both using getter, we add that to the top so we don't have this duplicate nest here and we can just do something like that. It's really a code preference, whatever you feel would look better but now that set username is still there but if i try player one dot set age it doesn't exist because we moved that annotation to the attribute level where we only apply it to the username so you might be thinking why is this not included in the java language well oracle's a little slow but also it kind of is like if we look at something called java records we can see all this information about this thing that is coming to Java called a record class. And it's solving a lot of the same problems that Lombok is solving. And so it's reducing the boilerplate code and it's a lot of those methods that we just looked at. 
The problem is, is it takes time to add something to the base level of a language. And so Java probably saw Lombok come out with these cool annotations, and now Java's doing the exact same thing. And so here they give this example class, and then it shows the example with records, and all you do is add that keyword record. Records are still in a preview stage, so this is something that you probably would not use in production code, but Lombok is used in lots of different code bases that are using Java in order to generate that sample code in the meantime. Now there are so many other annotations you can use with Lombok. So if we look at the stable, you can see all of these different annotations you can add to your classes in order to reduce Java code. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you will try Lombok in your next Java project and see how you like it. See you next time. Happy coding.